I now have the honor of introducing our third and final panelist, Mohamed Majoub. Mohamed Majoub is an agriculturalist and a torture survivor from Egypt. An accepted refugee in Canada and a father of two, Mohamed was arrested in June 2000, as we've heard, under a so-called security certificate. For almost 12 years, he has been in prison or under house arrest or severe conditions, although no charges have ever been laid against him. For almost 12 years, he has struggled to clear his name from vague allegations in a process stacked against him, a process in which the presumption of innocence does not apply, in which information used against him is kept secret, and in which evidence has been destroyed, and in which CSIS has admitted that the bulk of information used against him was likely obtained under torture. We are honored this afternoon to welcome Mohamed Majoub. I'm not going to focus uh, with anything except what happened uh, to me in Egypt uh, and uh, here in Canada as well. First of all, I would like uh, to say to you, I have been I have been silent for 12 years here in Canada. I spent 12 years between uh, detention and house arrest, and I was uh, very uh, silent. I uh, suffered too much uh, in, in my detention time and uh, this is the first time for me in public to speak about my story uh, in Egypt and uh, as well uh, here in Canada. Uh, first, uh, I got arrested in Egypt in 1996 by Egyptian authority. At the time, I was uh, in the military uh, uh, serving uh, compulsory uh, serv service uh, of Egyptian military. Uh, I've been detained for a few months. I was tortured very bad. Uh, then uh, they let me go to continue my, uh, my military service. Uh, after I finished my military service, they uh, continue following me and uh, investigating me and so on and so forth. And they ended up telling me, you have two choices. One, to spend your life in a prison in Egypt or to leave, uh, to leave Egypt. Then I decided to leave Egypt. Then I left Egypt, went to Saudi Arabia, then to Sudan, then to UK, then I ended up here in 1995, December, of, uh, December 31st. I came to Canada. Uh, a year later, I granted, I was granted uh, refugee status. Four and a half years later, I got arrested. Uh, in, in 1990, uh, 1990, 1996, Caesar was aware of my, my name, but somehow there is someone who was talking on the phone, this individual, his phone was tapped by Caesar. I think he was talking about me with somebody else, which I wasn't aware of anything. However, my name became known to, to Caesar. Uh, before I got arrested, Caesar has interrogated me several times, some of them in my, in my house, some of them in a Tobacco office. And in one incident, there is a lady from Caesar who interrogated me she insulted me, she insulted my religion as well. She was asking me about Salman Rushdie, about what he wrote about Islam, about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And she wasn't aware who is Salman Rushdie in first place, what, what kind of book he wrote. It was a shame when she testified in court, my lawyer 
or my previous lawyer asked her, do you know who Salman Rushdie? Have you read his book? She said no. It was, it was a shame. Someone to, uh, to uh, interrogate somebody about a book or about somebody else which she is not aware of. Uh, she, she told me, I can insult your religion, I can uh, insult your prophet uh, Muhammad, and so on and so forth. I raised my voice, please, you can insult me, but don't, please don't insult my, uh, my lord or my, uh, my religion or my belief. Then uh, she said to other people uh, in that office, oh, he, he is from uh, Middle, East, uh, Middle Eastern country, he's Arabic uh, backward, and so on and so forth. Just to show you how how kind of people whom will run the country in the future. Uh, again, she, uh, uh, she uh, threatened me to deport me to Egypt and so on and so forth. I said, please, do your job in a professional manner, manner and that's it. And she, she introduced herself to me as uh, immigration officer, not as a CSIS, uh, CSIS officer as well. Uh, after uh, CSS uh, became aware of my, my name, a year and a half later, three of my brothers got arrested in, in Egypt. One of them spent two and a half months in detention, tortured very bad, hospitalized, then they released him because of his uh, health, uh, health issue. The other two, which is one is the doctor, the other one, the second, the third one is the teacher. Both of them, they spent eight years in a prison in Egypt without a charge, without anything at all, without a trial, and the court released them at least 20 times. 20 times they released them, but the Egyptian authority, they arrested them from the back door. Just to show you how the reason I raise this concern with you to show you how the connection between the uh, spy agencies here in Canada and abroad as well, which I am accusing CSIS is behind my brother's detention. They share information with the Egyptian authority, even though I wasn't I wasn't arrested, I wasn't uh, I was free here in Canada, but my brother and back home, three of them, got detained, tortured very bad by the Egyptian authority because of I am their brothers. Uh, again, uh, in, uh, in 1998, uh, I got convicted uh, in absentia based on uh, information obta obtained under torture, as Mr. Hamid uh, raised it with you. And uh, there is a hundred and seven individuals, including myself, have been uh, uh, have been convicted in this in this case, which is very popular case across the world, which is called Retini from Albania, because there is a twenty individu Egyptian individual whom uh, uh, detained in uh, uh, in Albania, then they uh, deport them to Egypt. That's why they call this case the retainees from Albania. Uh, however, uh, it, it surprised me a month and a half ago. I, uh, I was shocked when I, I heard there is two individuals in this case. They reopened the case again before a military uh, tribunal, and they, the, the, the court cleared the, their name. They released them. Now they are free in Egypt, and they are still here under uh, house arrest in Canada, which is uh, uh, almost Canadian. They said, oh, we, we respect the human right, uh, and so on and so forth. The men, uh, the men accused in this case now are free, and one of them, just to, uh, to, hi to highlight to you who is he, is Muhammad al-Zawahiri. is a uh, brother of uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri, the second in command in, in, in Al-Qaeda. Just to, just to let you know, and Muhammad Mahjoub is still uh, detained in Canada. It's a shame.
uh, I would like to start again. Uh, when I got arrested, I was on my way to uh, to work, and a sudden I got out of uh, I got out of uh, street car, and a sudden uh, I would like to cross uh, the street. I found out eight uh, cars uh, or eight vehicles saying, "Oh, uh, uh, police, police, police!" I was looking right and left. What's going on? A innocent person. I found myself I am a target. And I said, you are a target. I said, guys, here is my hand. Why you didn't call me? I will come to you. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not, I'm not scared from, from you or from anybody else. I came here as a refugee. I apply, and you accepted me. You give, I, I, I am refugee status. You know what I mean? It, it, it was a surprise to me. I said, here, here, my, here is my uh, hand. They handcuffed me, and they sent me to... Uh, to detention, and first, and first place. So when I got there, I got beaten, beaten up by five, uh, five guards, and they beaten me very bad in my spine. I spent a month and a half. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything at all. Then a few months later, I got, uh, I got uh, death threat by uh, by the jail staff. One of them, they said to me, "Sorry, to, I have to say the same language because I would like." To, 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 I would like you to hear what they said to me. You are a fucking Muslim tourist. People like you should be killed. You convicted in absentia and so on and so forth. And he turned him, him, himself to the other detainee, the, saying to them, guys, why you didn't kill this uh, fucking Muslim? Why you didn't do anything wrong to him? Why? I didn't do anything wrong. I came, uh, I came back from court, then he tried to strip search me. I did whatever he, he, he is looking for. But here is the issue. If you are labeled as a terrorist or as a Muslim, it is over. You can't clear your name. Why is it here in Canada or elsewhere? But again, when it comes to torture, I think there is, we have here in this, in this room a very clear example what happened to him by CSIS and by his, uh, his country, which is Mr. Maher al -Rar. I feel sorry for him, as I feel sorry for my brothers, what they, they made, because I'm their brother. My first experience in detention as well, as you, most of you are aware, I, I went through several hunger strikes demanding for my fundamental basic of right. They denied me for access to for uh, health care. I, I will give you just one example. I had infection in my teeth. I spent eight months without medication, without seeing a, do uh, a dentist. And there is a, there is a dentist uh, at Metro Detention Center. Each time I, I put a request to see a dentist, they ask me, you have to be. I said, guys, I'm a, I'm a detainee. I'm not working, I'm not a free man. But at the end, because I'm a Muslim. Post 9-11, my life is turned upside down. It was a nightmare to me in Metro's detention center. A day and a half later, after September 11th, I was in... Uh, in, in uh, general population, they called me, Mahjou, come with us. As a lady called me, I said, where am I going? She said to me, we will deport you to the United States. <laughs> it was a funny story. I asked her why. I'm here uh, before 9-11 uh, for 15 months. Why you called me to, uh, to, to, to deport me? She said, oh, we will deport you. Anyway, she took me to a segregation unit. Uh, they strip search me, they, uh, uh, they give me a gown without uh, any clothes at all, uh, barefoot, uh, subject to uh, strip search any time, any time to leave uh, my, res my, my cell or to, to, come to, uh, to, to come again to my cell. At one point, I went to see my, uh, my family uh, during the visit. They told me, your family didn't show up. And a sudden, they called me back to segregation. Then one of the staff tried to sexual assaulted me. It was in, 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 2000, it was in 2002. 
exactly in 25th of 2000, January 25th of 2002. I went for hunger strike for 20, 29 days just to protest my right. I'm a human being. I'm not a terrorist. If I'm a terrorist, put everything on the table. It shocked me. It's very simple demand. Again, uh, 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 many times I went to hunger strike to have access to medical treatment. I, I can't, uh, for instance, I can't read without eyeglasses. I went for hunger strike for 83 days just to protest to have eyeglasses here in Canada, guys. I feel ashamed, honestly, for Canadian Canadian government, not for Canadian in general. Also, whenever my, my kids protest in a rally around the Metro's detention center, next time you are not allowed to see your dad. Why? Because you protest for your uh, your dad's right. There was like uh, 10 years or 7 years and they uh, prohibited them to, to see their dad as well. Uh, during my, uh, my period of time in, in detention, RCMP as well uh, uh, interrogated me and when I asked them, uh, guys, uh, should I have uh, my lawyer? They said, yes. I said, I would like to see my lawyer. They said, no, 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 no. Uh, I said, uh, they said to me, Mahjoub, we cannot twist the law. I said, it is not law. The law is applied to me to have my lawyer with me if there is any, any kind of investigation. They said, no, no, no. We have a right to twist the law when it comes to terrorists. Uh, again, uh, in, 2000 and, in 2003, I had uh, high blood pressure, very high. And I called uh, to see a nurse, a nurse called uh, the staff to hospitalize me. They refused. Instead of to hospitalize me, they, they uh, took me from uh, population, uh, general population. They uh, put me in uh, segregation, naked, all night without any kind of a treatment. Then they was laughing at me. There is another individual was in segregation at the time. He he is the one he told me they was laughing at you because at that at that day the United States arrest Saddam Hussein. They say they was saying to each other, oh, Mahjoub was crying, was yelling, because, not because he's sick. He pretend he's sick, but he was angry because of Saddam Hussein uh, got uh, cut by the United States. Then uh, again, when a doctor saw me uh, next day, he found out my uh, blood pressure is too high. Uh, then he found out again uh, I have uh, hepatitis C and so on, which I catch it uh, during my time in detention. Uh, after many times for hunger strike, uh, the, min the, the minister decided to, to build up a special unit for uh, five Muslims. They called it uh, Guantanamo North, uh, which I called it uh, concentration camp. Whenever I, uh, I, I, I see uh, uh, KIHC detention, it is reminding me when Hitler built a concentration camp for a Jew people. I always, it always come to my mind, it is not uh, Guantanamo Bay, it's a concentration camp for Muslims. Because we, did, we, we didn't see anyone who come to uh, KIHC, which in, in Millhaven. But they got rid of us from Toronto because we, stri we, we made a hunger strike. We made a lot of noise to, the, to, to, to put attention to, uh, to the government uh, to protest for our right. Uh, after, after, after I spent seven years in, in detention, then I have been released in 2007 till 2009. In, this, in that period of time, my family was in house arrest with me, all of them, including my, my, my children. And 
they play they are my jailer because my my wife for instance can't leave the house at all 24 7 unless somebody else play the same role such as this gentleman here is Mr. Lumley or some other surety. I can't myself can sit alone with my, my kids. I was prohibited by, by, by court to sit alone with my kids. Just to show you how, how, how much is difficult. And it is still difficult. It has ended up my family couldn't handle it. For instance, my wife had a miscarriage. I took her to the hospital. Then we found out with one of the staff of CBSA wrote a false report, completely false report, and he said, oh, uh, Mahjoub's wife do this and that, and he decided to call uh, a task force to shut down the whole entire hospital, which I called them, and they told me, Mahjoub, take your wife by ambulance and go with your wife. This is one example. Again, my stepson has a surgery, I took him with my wife, we called CBC and so on, and they said, go ahead. Then when we took him there, we found out a completely different story. The whole entire hospital was thinking, my stepson is the target, he is the one under house arrest, not me. It was a funny story as well. Uh, they was following, uh, following up my, my, my wife, my, my kids, even I'm not with them at all. My family ended up, they couldn't handle it. I see them, I decide to go back to detention again, voluntarily, just to protect them. I spent, I went to uh, detention again for, for, for one year, and I was in hunger strike to protest my right as well. For, for six months in hunger strike, just to show this is the only way I have to do it. I don't have anything else. My hand is tied. My, my lawyer's hand is tied as well. They can't do anything else except to speak in public or to show the story or, or to share the story with uh, some kind of uh, nice individual like you uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, a uh, couple of times or three times I was hospitalized. One of uh, RCMB uh, who uh, transferred me from uh, detention to hospital, he asked me a silly question. Who's your lawyer? I said, uh, Ms. Jackman and uh, Mr. John Norris. Just guess what he said to me. He said, your fucking lawyer are corrupt this country. Again, is this kind of people who will run the country in the future, guys? It is ridiculous. Uh, right now, I'm under house arrest. Same thing. Since 2007 until 2009, from 2010, and now we are in 2012. And they're still under house arrest. I have a bracelet here. And this is the GPS, this is my baby. I have to carry it out with me at 24-7. If I leave it, for instance, 10 meter, it will alert them. Mahjoub left his baby. And whenever I go with my family, the CBSA, like our shadows, carrying a gun with them in public. How come you feel comfortable walking with, you, with your wife, with your kids, and somebody else carrying a gun behind you? It was very, very stressful. It was very painful. And it's still. But it's ended up, I lost my family. I am living alone now. Uh, I, will, I would like to conclude my statement to you today. This is my story. I share just a few things happened to me, not everything, because if I will continue talking about it, it will take hours and days and weeks. But 
now I have to say to the immigration minister and public safety minister, this is demand from Mahjoub to withdraw the case against me. It is my demand for them to withdraw the case based on many things. Number one, they intercepted my communication with my lawyer for a decade. Number two, destruction of evidence. Number three, uh, uh, torture, uh, uh, obtaining uh, information under torture. Number four, commingling issue. There is no basis for this case to be continued again and again and again. Thank you so much for having me t today. Thank you so much again. And for all of you, especially for uh, people who uh, make this event for me to, to speak before you, and for uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Mary, my lawyer, uh, Mr. Hamid, and uh, my special thanks to this gentleman, Mr. Murray Lumley, who sacrificed his time, and uh, he come uh, with me from Toronto and to here. Otherwise, I can't come by myself. Thank you so much.